Hello, my name is Costanza, and we are going to start in this class the second lesson of the electric field section, which is Coulomb's law. This lesson consists of two parts, Coulomb's law and the superposition principle. In this particular lesson, we will focus on Coulomb's law. We will make a short introduction, we will see the law, and finally, we will see an example to clarify the concepts. Well, we are going to start with the simplest case, and from there we will go up in difficulty. The simplest case is to study charges at rest and electric fields that do not depend on time. This is what electrostatics does. The next step would be to consider that these charges are in motion in permanent regime, and we would talk about magnetic fields that do not depend on time in the magnetostatics part. Finally, what we would do would be to consider time-dependent electric and magnetic fields and study the interaction between them. That study would be carried out by the electromagnetism part. Well, we have said that electrostatics deals with charges at rest and electric fields that do not depend on time and is based on Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law was established by Coulomb in the 18th century. It is only valid for determining forces between point and rest charges. And he came to announce his law from some experiments he performed. To perform the experiments, he used a torsion balance. A torsion balance consists of a test charge, which is the red one here, and a torsion pendulum. The torsion pendulum will be rotating, and by measuring that rotated angle, we will be able to determine, or Coulomb was able to determine, how much the force was worth. From the experiments and the conclusions he reached, he enunciated the law that bears his name. This law tells us that if we have two charged particles with charges Q sub 1 and Q sub 2, respectively, being at rest, and separated by a distance r in a vacuum, the influence exerted by q sub 1 on q sub 2 is a force proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance that separates them, the direction being that of the straight line that joins them. Mathematically, this law can be expressed in this way. Let us now comment on it. In Coulomb's law, Q sub 1 and Q sub 2 are the electric charges. R is the distance between the charges from here to here. Q sub R is a unit vector. We'll calculate it as the split vector R of its modulus. R is the vector that goes from Q sub 1 to Q sub 2. And the modulus is nothing more than this distance. So the vector Q sub R will go in that direction and sense. K is a constant that is not universal and depends on the medium in which we are. In the case of vacuum, it has a value of 9 times 10 raised to 9 newtons, squared meters squared, coulomb squared. It can also be expressed as 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon sub 0. Being epsilon sub 0, the vacuum permittivity, which has a value in units of the international system of 8.85 times 10 raised to minus 12. The units of charge are the Coulomb and are represented by the capital letter C. What further considerations do we have to make? Well, in Coulomb's law, we have to replace the charges Q sub 1 and Q sub 2 with their sign. In this way, charges of the same sign, either both positive or both negative, will exert a repulsive force since F and U sub R in both cases have the same direction. If we have a positive charge and a negative charge, the force is attractive since U sub R and F have opposite senses. Well, let's see an example where, example where this is made clear. Jota and Amanda want to know the electrostatic force that a charge exerted on a charge Q sub A has on a charge Q sub A. On a charge Q sub A is located at the point A and we want to see the force on another positive charge. Q located at a different point. Then we will see it for a negative charge. What is the first thing we have to do? 
The first thing we do is draw the charge Q sub A on the axis. Point A is 0L. We draw the charge at that point. What do we have to do next? Draw the charge Q sub B at the point where it is. Well, we want to calculate the force that Q sub A exerts on Q sub B. We put, we express Coulomb's law in generic form. And now what we have to do is we have to determine R and U sub R. What will R be equal to? R is the vector A. B, then it's going to be coordinates of point B minus coordinates of point A. L minus zero, Li L minus L zero. Then the vector R is Li. The unit vector will be this vector R divided by its modulus, which modulus is L, and so the unit vector is I. We draw it, we draw it. What is left now? To take into account the values of Q sub A and Q sub B, and substitute them in this expression. Well, we will have to take into account also the value of u sub r and r, of course. Finally, we obtain that the force that A exerts on B is k q squared split L squared by the unit vector i. We draw the force and we see that this force is repulsive and that u sub r and f have the same sense since the two charges were of the same sign. Let's see now what happens if we have charges of opposite sign. We locate the points where the charges are, we place on them the charges that we are going to study, and we apply Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law that we are going to do, calculate. The force that the particle A exerts on the charge located at the point C, Q sub C, are of opposite sign. Well, we will calculate u sub r and r. r will be equal to the vector ac, which as we've already said will be coordinates of point c minus coordinates of point a. 0 minus 0, 0, minus l, minus l, minus 2l, and so that vector will be minus 2lj. Its modulus is 2l, and therefore the unitary is minus j. We draw it. We now take into account the values of Q sub A and Q sub C. Substitute these values, the value of R and the value of U sub R. And we have this expression. Let's note that one was positive and one was negative, and we have replaced it with its sign. Less times less is more. So we finally get that force is K Q squared divided by 4L squared, J. Then when we draw it, we see that the force and u sub r have opposite senses since we had charges of different signs. Well, what have we seen in this class? We have studied Coulomb's law, which allows us to calculate or determine the force that appears on two charges at rest in a vacuum. That's all. Thank you very much, and see you in the next class.